Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Dr. Rick dropping in. Uh, it's a Sunday morning. I'm up. I've been up for a while working. Um, and you saw uh, the intro, so you know that we are um, in the midst of a fundraiser and we are pushing to gain support for the work we do as a research center, as a think tank, as a community service provider for everything from uh, social programs like Black Men Lead, also uh, assisting uh, with um, mental health issues for black men and black women, uh, domestic violence, and so much more. Uh, there's also a stronger push now for helping kids who are struggling with uh, adverse childhood experiences, which is a part of a big push I've dealt with with trauma um, in so many areas. We need more research. We need more people uh, and resources pointed towards think, think tanks to create solutions, programs, uh, agendas, blueprints, a lot of the things that you can find on the Odyssey Project site, but we need your support. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna move in uh, to the discussion of why I'm here this morning. Uh, you know that um, I'm not about celebrity gossip. I'm not about uh, pouring all of our focus on celebrities and entertainment and sensationalism. Uh, but I'm also aware of the fact that uh, our people gravitate towards gossip, sensationalism, celebrity mentions. Um, it's just easy. I collect so much data off of what I do on social media and how our people interact. And simply something that has a celebrity's name to it is going to get more draw, more attention. Um, the things that have more tangible influence, more productive and efficient and effective means. In other words, they're substantive. Uh, we don't gravitate towards that. So I've seen that. Uh, but my rule of thumb in dealing with celebrity issues is, is there a teaching uh, moment in all of it and if there's no teaching moment just sitting up talking about it does nothing for me except maybe get my viewership up and maybe a few more subscribers i'm not interested in getting my viewership up for the sake of getting my viewership up yes i would like to have it up if it means getting in front of more people and giving them the information the knowledge and to challenge them to take what they know and do something with it then that's good just to have people popping in and listening and just sharing opinions for no no particular reason isn't why I'm here. I'm not here to get my ego stroked. I'm not here uh, to build a following of yes men and yes women. I'm here because I believe I have uh, 30 plus years in the game of research, uh, closing in on 80,000 hours of research solely based on the black experience. That's not anything else I've done in any other area. That's solely based on the black experience. Volumes of books, volumes and volumes of academic articles and um, disseminations of my uh, findings and research programs like Black Men Lead, uh, programs like Music is Life, um, working with um, women, uh, black women, from trauma from childhood, 
uh, including incest, childhood sexual abuse, domestic violence, uh, mental health programs for black men. And those are the things that I want to share. Those are the things that I want to bring forth, the knowledge that I have invested in gaining, not for the sake of walking around, lording it up and look what I know and having intellectual debates. I'm not up for any intellectual pissing contest. What I am up for is sitting up and connecting with minds, learning from other people what I don't know and teaching them what I do uh, and creating a path of empowerment. We love to talk about liberation. We love to talk about empowerment, but we very rarely sit up and actually engage the things that could lead to it. They're not fascinating. They're not sensational. They don't have a big flash to it. We love the shiny thing, but we fail to take hold of the things that actually have the ability to bring us what we need. And unfortunately, it continues uh, to cause a downward spiral into our demise. Uh, a friend of mine shared a quote that I did in an interview probably 10 years ago, and the quote was, uh, the only thing that blacks have seen to master is financing our own demise and then complaining about, uh, complaining when we get what we pay for. Um, and that's been us. We consistently pour into other people's economies and then complain about how they use the money we use to we pay, give them to enrich them to hold us back uh it's it's amazing uh but it's real it's the power of the mind when you can tell the mind that something is good even though it's not good the mind is going to operate based on the programming uh the reason i'm here again the reason i mentioned all that is this there's a lot of hoorah going around about Ja Moran. If you don't know who Ja Moran is, he's a rising star, I think like 22 years old, a uh, young rising star uh, in the NBA, very athletic kid, very charismatic, uh, an unbelievable dunker for his height, um, in-game dunker. He's, he, 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 he's, he's fun to watch. Um, obviously, he came, you know, from a background background now the interesting thing is his father's in his life but his father is street his father also seems to be growing up you know, around the same time as Jai. this isn't an attack on anything because number one the man is there uh he's played an integral role in supporting and developing him as an athlete obviously uh i think that that has to be taken in consideration as well. But anyway, Ja has been on a roll of doing things that are considered unprofessional. And you know that I'm not a big fan of folding to what others think we should be or do. But there's a way to carry yourself. There's a way uh, to present yourself that is reflective of who you want to be as a person. And also, there's a level of responsibility that a lot of quote-unquote celebrities and athletes and entertainers don't want to do. And that is the fact that you have an influence on younger people creates a greater sense of responsibility for you to behave in a certain way because there are going to be young kids who buy your jerseys, who wear your sneakers, who watch every game on the edge of their seats that are also watching what you do off the court. And while we live in a world where we don't want to be held to a standard, a great deal of manhood is developed within a young male through observation of manhood being modeled. Um, that's why Black Men Lead is so uh, relevant and important as a rite of passage program because a great deal of what we do, yes, we teach them. Yes, we ingrain and inculcate into their minds the responsibility of manhood. But every man that's engaging them is a man that's operating at a high level in his role as a man. Doesn't mean he's a six-figure dude. It means that he knows how to treat women. It means that he has a responsibility to do the best he can be as a provider, as a wage earner, so that he can build and do and, and, and exercise power. He is present in the life of his ch children. He, he is 
proactive and pro-social in the community, thinking more, thinking about more than just himself. That's modeled. A big part of social learning theory is modeling. What am I seeing you do? I hear what you're telling me, but I, what am I seeing you do? Okay, so what we have to understand is if we're in these roles, then there comes a responsibility because there's a generation coming behind us that's going to model their behavior after us. Now, is it completely fair? This isn't about fair. Life has never been about fair. Life has been about understanding how things work and acting accordingly. What do I mean? I mean, um, if life was fair, we all have the same starting point. If life was fair, we'll all have the equal opportunity. If life was fair, I wouldn't have to be three times better than anybody that does what I do to get the same uh, access and the same standing and all of the other things that I've had to fight through my entire It's not about being fair. It's about doing what you need to do to be your best and contributing, understanding that you're in an imbalanced uh and weighted situation that's actually weighted against you. So that means that you actually got to be on your game better than anyone that doesn't look like you. And and it, again, this isn't about fair. This is about reality. So again, this isn't about me jumping on him. This is about me talking about why it's important for all of us to be on board and understand this. Number one is, again, for the sake of presence, I applaud his father, but again, from what I've gathered and watching his father's behavior since he's been in the league and some of the things that he's gotten himself uh, involved in and a bunch of things. And then looking at some of the things, it's obvious that he lacks a level of maturity uh, to be able to pull him to the side. Now, I'm not saying that he doesn't have men. And I'm not saying that his dad has said, do what you're doing. I don't know. So I can't say, but what I can say is consistent behavior is a reflection of the people you're around. Association brings about assimilation. Those who you be, are around the most are going to influence your behavior. So when you see something like that, you have to say, uh, what I call celebrity or, uh, celebrity syndrome, so to speak, what happens when someone in the family or someone uh, who we hold dear or close makes it and they become that person, people tend to fold to their will instead of holding them to the flame. And what you did, what you end up with are entourages and yes men or yes women, people who follow you around and tell you that your shit don't stink and that whatever you want to do, you can do. And the truth of the matter is there's an entire system waiting to snatch you off your pedestal. There's an entire system waiting to push you under the ground. There's an entire system that wants to take you and break you. Uh, and again, we're talking about a 22 year old and that isn't lost on me. It isn't lost on me that none of us were, you know, making just great wise decisions, but there's a responsibility that we must have. And this is important why we must teach uh, village, tribal, and community uh, principles. So in other words, at 22, I shouldn't have to know it all because I should have a hierarchy of men in my world, in my life, that will pull me to the side that I have enough respect for that when they pull me to the side, I see what's going on. Men that I know have my best interests at heart. Men who I know have a, a, a sense of love and respect for me and want nothing for the best for me. Men that I can't look at and say they're hating because they're checking me. And those are the men we need if the problem is there's a missing 1.5 million men who are struggling in their own right. 1.3 of those men are in prison. Another 200,000 drugs, checked out, can't figure it out, and a bunch of other things. So there's this big gap where we need it most in the hood because most of the people in the prison came from the hood. So there's this big gap of men. So boys are trying to figure it out. And even when they're figuring it out with men around, a lot of times the men don't have it figured out. 
And it's okay not to have it figured out because I'm I'm 55 and I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still becoming. It's not about knowing everything. It's not about always getting it right. What it is about is saying that I am going to make sure I do the best with what I have. Responsibility and purpose are important. And we teach that to young boys at Black Men. You, 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 you need to understand why you're here. And it's bigger than you. So, yes, enjoy yourself. Get yourself. People, you've heard me say this how many times? That the first half of my life was about me. So, I get it. The first half of my life was about me. It's about me doing, uh, buying what I want, driving what I want, living where I want, and proving that I could. And I realized in my 30s that, wait a minute, I got things that I dreamed of having. And I'm not happy. I'm waking up two or three o'clock in the morning, can't go back to sleep, pacing around, trying to figure it out. And I realized that I wasn't operating in my purpose. I realized that things don't make a man. I realized that money can't define you. It only intensifies and magnifies who you are. P good people with money do good things. Bad people with money do bad things. It's, 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 it's that simple. Money doesn't make you good. Money doesn't make you evil. Money simply amplifies who you are on the inside. So there's an importance to develop young black males. And this isn't to condemn. This is to speak on a... He's a microcosm of a much larger issue. And I think it's important, and I hope that he does, you know... This is what he did. I'm just talking. This is what he did. Late, the last thing he's did. He's been on a roll. He's been doing a bunch of stuff. Um, in a club after a game, after they, they had a loss, I want to say, against the Clippers. He plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, and they had a loss against the Clippers. He's out in the club, and he's on Instagram doing a live, and he show, he's shouting the music pan in the background, and he's got a gun in his hand. Okay, I mean, you're John ja Morant, one of the hottest players in the NBA at the time. You don't think that that's going viral? Didn't take long for it to get back to the officials in the NBA and the team. Uh, they did uh, uh, what they call an internal investigation. I mean, it's not a whole lot you can investigate, dude sitting up holding a gun. Um, and they decided that it was detrimental to the brand. Uh, now, he's saying he's stepping away, but he accepts, he accepts responsibility. Now, obviously, this is more than, more than likely a statement issued by his, uh, his uh, publicist or his agent. And... It's saying that I accept responsibility and I'm going to step away for a few few days uh, to get help. Uh, translated, team suspended him, uh, or the league suspended him, but definitely a suspension. From what I get, from what I understand, a two game suspension. Uh, and there are so many different angles from which to talk on this. Number one is I'm all for the players who represent the talent in the league having the power in the league. So this isn't about me worried about the NBA's brand. What it is me saying when you've got an opportunity to move in something and pull something from them uh, at, at that magnitude, at that magnitude, uh, you want to definitely – Sorry. Sorry about that. That one had to be answered. Um, but you have a responsibility when you are sitting up and you're dealing with that. Um, I don't care about the NBA's brand. I do care about young black males who are in a position to better themselves and create a future of generational wealth for their children. Start there. 
Don't go hanging the whole responsibility of the race on the back of a 22 year old, but definitely have them in the mindset of understanding that the average NBA player is literally broke, financially destitute, you know, relatively speaking, they owe more than they have is broke. When you owe more than you have, that's broke. Um, you have a responsibility to yourself. Um, you have a responsibility to yourself. You have a responsibility to your offspring uh, to build. Because here's this. Within three years of retiring, the average NBA player is broke. Same thing with the average NFL player. Failure to properly manage your proceeds and all of that. So that needs to be someone in his ear about that because it doesn't, the one thing that's good in the NBA is that money's a guaranteed contract. So if something happens to him physically, he's still going to get paid on his contract. But there's so much more to this. You don't want to violate the terms of the contract in through behavior and end up getting X'd out and pushed out because I've seen it happen. I've seen tremendous talent uh, pushed out. And again, I'm saying this with this pull because... I don't want it to make it seem like we're blessed to be in that world. No, we're blessing that world, and we need to be pulling as much away from that economy and pouring into our own uh, self-interest. In other words, even if he's not talking, uh, pouring into, uh, pouring into uh, the black community as a whole, if he's talking about building wealth for his family, that he can pull money out of a white economy, invest it in things that grow his personal financial portfolio and pass it on to his children. That's one thing. But he can't do that if he sits up and moves in a way that's detrimental and causes him to be completely pushed away from and have it, and have it take away from it. We saw that with Ray Rice. We saw it happen temporarily with... Uh, Kareem Hunt. Uh, and again, they did things that they should not have done. But we see on the other side that the game isn't played on a level playing field. You punch your woman, we're going to take your career. This dude's been beating the hell out of his wife for the entire time he's been in the league. We're going to give him a two-game suspension. And you, we, we know what color he is, right? Now, to me, personally, you know how I am. I have absolutely no sympathy for anybody that put for any man that puts his hand on a black woman, regardless of what color he is. I have a problem with, but I have a specific problem with a black man. Why? Because you're supposed to be her protector. That's where we have to start. We have to start with that. Now, re reeling back around to this whole Jod thing, you know, my thing is how many kids on Instagram are going to see that and think that's the thing to do and not realizing that there are federal agents combing social media looking for black kids specifically that are waving around guns and doing things that they can get them on RICO charges, get them on uh, unlawful possession, get them on felony possession of firearms that they've already been arrested. And there's this culture of waving your guns around. There's this culture of saying this is something to be. No, you have a right to be armed. You have a right to be armed. And again, that's a double standard. You know, um, how do we present that? The club environment standing around. Number one is you're not supposed to have a weapon where alcohol is being served. Number one. Even if you're licensed, even if you have your gun legally, you're not allowed to have a gun where alcohol is being served. Uh, if you have a license, you're not allowed to have your gun on you if you've taken a drink. It doesn't even matter whether you're uh, uh, 
intoxicated or not. These are things we need to understand because it's the little nuances in the laws that they use to take us down. The little things we don't understand that get us caught up. Uh, my whole thing is when you have the spotlight on you, you have an opportunity to use that spotlight for positivity and good, or you can turn an, an entire area dark, even with the spotlight on you, by behavior. And my concern is what message is someone with that type of platform sending? Um, there's been great debate for years on whether or not LeBron James belongs in the same conversation or has surpassed Michael Jordan. And, and I, I refuse to get in that because in order to get into it, the average person wants to tear the person that they don't agree, that they want to tear the opposite person down. I'm not in tearing any man that's done what either one of them are done in their careers, whether you like them as people or not. What they've done in their careers is ridiculously remarkable and I refuse to tear down each one. I have my 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 pick on who I think the goat is, but what I can tell you is that there's a goat and there's a king. I'm good with both. Both of these dudes have got down. But where I like LeBron and I'm not painting him as this perfect person. I don't know what's going on. But the way that he's presented himself in public, some of the political stuff he's jumped on I'm not rolling with some of the stances he's taken. I don't have to roll with, but I don't have to agree with someone completely in order to respect them. I just have to like how they move. Number one is I like how he handles his wife. That's going to be the first thing I examine with a man. How do you treat the women in your life from your mother to your wife, to your daughters, to your sisters, to the women that you work with? How are you handling a woman? See, that's one of the conversations we don't want to get into. And that's one of the things I haven't seen. I don't know what Jai's story is. Some, maybe somebody does know his story, but I've never seen his mom. Um, but so that's the thing. So my, 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 my concern is how important it is for us to get ourselves in alignment and and hold young cats accountable. Be a force. Offer yourselves up. This is what we do at Black Man Lead. This is why I give so much of myself. That's why I'm so spent. There's a reason why I've had I had to take two mental, two week uh, mental health break, health break at the beginning of the year, and I've got one scheduled every quarter, a week scheduled every quarter this year, and I take a day every week because of how hard I've gone for the past thirty years. And if I want to go another 30, I've got to get some ways to release because I'm putting so much into it. But it's what I believe in. And if I go tomorrow, I go knowing I've gave it everything I have. I'm not leaving anything on the table. But I'm concerned that because we don't understand how things work. what There's nothing. You know why? They have no problems paying these absorbent uh, amounts of money to um, uh, professional athletes and entertainers is because how quickly that money flows back into their economy and how easily blacks tend to make it for them to snatch them off a pedestal when they get too big for themselves. They have been wanting to snatch Kyrie, but Kyrie, uh, and and we be, we we are the biggest contributors to attack the one that's actually standing up and speaking and behaving responsibly. This guy gives to every time I look up, he's donating to somebody that who's going through something or some in the situation or some situation, uh, and he speaks his truth based on what it is. And sometimes it's been off. The whole flat for flat world thing uh, was off, but he came back and said, "Hey, look." I was misinformed. He doesn't have a problem of being wrong and admit. He really carries himself in a way that while I don't have to agree with everything that he does, I respect how he moves and he refuses to be handled by a system when he knows his value in the system. And the system can't stand him, but they can't seem to get rid of him. And that's the type of situation you want to put yourself into. 
while you don't like some of the things he's done, while you sit up and upset some of the upset with him because he didn't get the, the poke, some of you are upset with him because he didn't buy down about this and, uh, and that, the bottom line is he's carried himself in a good he He hasn't been arrested. He hasn't been caught beating this woman. All the things that they love to put out about us, that's not him. Him saying, I'm not doing that. I, I'm going to exercise my personal right. You can't make me do that. Oh, they don't like that. They want to believe they can make you do anything. So when we come to someone like John, and I'm, he's just this person now. There are a bunch of them, and there have been a bunch of them. This didn't just start. So, you know, we've had bad, bad, bad actors for a while. But this guy, you know, everybody's going, what in the hell's wrong with this kid? Number one is, can you imagine coming from meager beginnings and being a multimillionaire just like that? And everybody is kissing your butt. Everybody telling you that you're the man and all of a sudden you got all of this and you walk in the club, the, the waters part and you pick the spot you want to be in and everybody's jocking to get at you. You know what it could do. I mean, it's easy to go there at 22 years old. I'm expected that, but that's why we need to create a village mindset. We need to create a tribal mindset. We need to have an understanding that his father needs men around him to say, hey, you need to pull his coattail because just as fast as this stuff came, it can leave. And at least let him build something. See, the one thing I can tell you about Kyrie, if, he, they, they, if they say, okay, we're done with you right now, Kyrie is probably going to be good from what I've been able to find out and look into. He's going to be good. And obviously by his, his willingness to help other people, a lot of other people are going to be good. A lot of other people that look like us. He takes a very strong sense of responsibility and pride in his blackness. And they don't like that. And they don't like that even in his resistance, he's not doing it in a way that they can just post it up and say, oh my God, see, this is what's wrong. See, he's not being that hyper violent hyper whatever they like to present about us he's simply just stating it he and he can state it in a way and he then he does it so nonchalantly that they want to feel they can trigger you uh you know with the the riffs on the sideline that his dad always seems to get into what he does and uh off the court Again, this isn't about the NBA's brand. But see, the NBA has a problem with it because the last thing they need is to have it that they have players supporting um, irresponsible handling of a firearm. See, even no matter what side of the fire firearm uh, or right to carry uh, argument you want to stand on, there's still responsibility. I grew up in a house full of weapons and because my grandfather was, you know, actually my great grandfather. So he's my grandmother's father born in 1909. There were no locks. The rifles were hanging on the wall. His number one uh, go to was under his pillow. The others were in drawers that I knew about. And at a very early age, I was taught how to use them, taught responsibility, taught what to do with them, taught what not to do with them. And that nothing ever happened where you go, oh, my God, they shouldn't have had guns in that house because there's responsibility that comes with gun ownership. Flashing it around and saying, I got it, isn't one. And so, again, we're talking about a 22-year-old. So instead of throwing him to the woods, instead of talking about how stupid he is, I want to really highlight the importance of having the right people around you. And right now, it's going to be easy for him because of his ego and all that comes with the success he's had to want yes men around him, the entourage. It's going to be important for people who have some influence, whether it's his agent, his publicist, his dad. And maybe that's the way to reach him is through his dad. Get his dad and say, look, 
I know you're having a ball. You're enjoying what your son done. This thing is shortly, 15 years from now, it's probably going to be over. If he's come, if he if he's fortunate, 15 years from now, he's going to have about 17 years, 18 years in the league. He won't be able to jump as high, run as fast, and his career is going to be winding down. You want to have made as many wise decisions in that to be in a situation where you're good, he's good, your great, 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 great grandkids are good, and that you can now start to make an impact in ways that leave a legacy behind. I'm real big on legacy. I'm real big on what your life is going to say about you after you're gone. Nobody is going to remember what you drove 20 years ago when you're gone. The average person won't be able to quote your net worth. Except people whose responsibility and job and and all that and interest is in that area. But people will be able to say is he spoke life. He touched life. I love the way he treated women. I love the way he treated kids. I love the time and interest he spent doing this. I love the fact that he showed up to boys clubs. And I, I love the fact that he did lock ins with boys. And I love the fact. And, and whatever your thing is that says I'm leaving my imprint. And specifically black men, black women too, but specifically black men. One of the greatest ways to exercise your power is creating a legacy. Something they can't take from you. Something they can't indict. Something that they can't imprison. Build a legacy. And your, your legacy is going to be a compilation of your mistakes poor decision making, but it's going to be your intent. So your character isn't just reflected in whether you've done the right thing. Your character is reflected in your intentional uh, pursuit of being who you say you are. And that includes the mistakes you're going to make because you're human. So I don't expect a 22 year old to be mistake free and not get out there and not get fooled. And some kids are tempered different. You know, he's charismatic, he's high strong, he's that dude, and that personality is what makes him him, but he, he has to learn how to manage it and temper it, because there are going to be many times, not just in basketball, where there are going to be people who are going to seek to use his personality and, 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 and uh, vigor against him, and in the wrong place, it could turn out catastrophic, and so we need to understand how to move. Um, again, I'm not for tearing any brother down that I think has, as long as I don't think you've totally sold us out, I'm not attacking you. I'm going to talk about what, what you did if I think it's important, but hell, I've, I'm a long way from perfect. I haven't always made good decisions and hell, a lot of decisions I made that I wish I had back. I, well, long after 22 that's the honesty of it this isn't about the expecting them to do it it's about saying what are we getting out of this as a collective number one way too many black kids are seeing this and thinking it's cool because he's a celebrity and we give more weight and gravity to celebrity than we do parents than we do teachers than we do professionals like lawyers and doctors and judges and all of those so yeah that's what we're going to emulate what the rappers are doing, what the athletes are doing, well, then that puts a lot of responsibility on Me personally, I don't think that's where the focus should be. I don't think that our kids should be looking to athletes. I think our kids should be looking to us. That means we drop the ball. I think our kids need to be looking and saying, what should I do? And he should be able to do that too. Hey, you know, don't, don't dash me. Hey, don't go out there doing this. Don't go out there doing that. You know, I had my pops which was my great-grandfather. I never knew my dad, but I had my pops, my, my, my great-grandfather. Hey, don't go out there and do nothing stupid. You know what I told you. Hey, watch this when you go out there. Hey, be careful of this when you go out there. And that was it until I was 25 when he left me. And I still listen to the words of wisdom that we shared predominantly on that front porch in the home I grew up in. 
and I try to import it to my kids. I try to import it to my grandkids. I try to import it to all the young males and females that I work with. So, in essence, I think that we number one have to really re in we have to revisit. Um, we have to revisit the need for us to be on our A game at all times. I think we have to understand that until we learn how things work and we operate within the scope of bettering ourselves and our people, we're going to always be at a disadvantage. Um, that we need to revisit the idea of placing the power of influence back in the hand of the parents in the village instead of celebrities and athletes. Uh, I think that um, we'll be a lot stronger. We'll be a lot wiser. But I'm telling you, what I see in the way that our people behave doesn't present well. It doesn't project well into the future we're at a place where we're going to have to learn how to do things differently than we've done. We are actually worse off than we were 50 years ago. And they just put a lot of shiny things in front of us to make it seem like we're not. The socioeconomic positioning of blacks is worse. The wealth gap has widened. The political range and influence has dissipated these are the realities these are what the numbers show us this isn't how you feel so they can put some images in front of you and make you feel like you've arrived make you feel good you can look up and see black billionaires that 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 came from athletes michael jordan and tiger woods and lebron james billionaires dr j pushing billionaire Diddy pushing billionaire. And then you got all these guys that are right there at the 500 to 300 race from Will Smith on, all of them. Those are less than 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1. I mean, point zero 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 one of the percentage of the actual blacks in this country. Our median wealth is $160,000 less than the white median household wealth they're at 170 something 160 something 170 something 177 is the last i checked and, and it, it varies with different studies but 177 versus 17 in some of those studies we're down as low as seven asians are closing the wealth gap but and they've already exceeded them in the earnings gap they have a high median earning than whites and they know what to do with it when they get it. So they're going to close the gap. The reason why that's not a big deal to whites is the number of Asians in this country aren't significant enough for that to be a problem. Latinos and blacks still scare fights. And that's the whole argument about the border. We need to understand how to operate together. We need to understand how to work together. We need to understand the importance of generational wealth. We need to understand the importance of collective uh, engagement. We need to understand the importance of uh, directive and unified agendas, a blueprint for empowerment. Talking about empowerment without a blueprint of by which you're going to gauge your movement to get there is just talk. So... Uh, that's it for me. Look, I am excited about what's possible, but I'm concerned about what I see. That's all. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, if you believe in the work we've done for decades, uh, I mentioned a lot of it in the beginning. Uh, some of it during this this uh, video. Go to the description box and click the link and donate. If you prefer, you can donate through the organization's cash app account. That information is there as well. 
But none of this stuff happens for free. None of this is going to happen at a grand level without uh, the unification of our people and coming together and make it happen. And we're going to have to start putting an emphasis and priority on the knowledge, the planning, the power, and the minds of the people who are capable of making it happen. It's that simple. So on that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable.